Hello friends, my name is Theo and today in this exciting Mr. Media tutorial, we'll be talking about calibration, specifically hardware calibration on these LG TVs. I've talked in the past about how these TVs can accept a lookup table for hardware calibration, but it takes a few little tricks to get that to happen. So you're going to need a couple of things to make this work. First of all, an LG TV that does accept a hardware LUT. Second, you're going to need a calibration device or color meter that you can put on the TV to read values. Third, you're going to need a service remote, which I will put a link for in the description. It's just a couple of bucks. Don't worry about it. And then fourth, you need a copy of the CalMan software. Now, the CalMan software is really the key behind this because that's what interfaces with the TV and uploads the LUT. So in order to make sure I got everything right, I sent the good people at CalMan an email, and they were generous enough to lend me some of their time to walk me through the whole process to make sure everything is exactly right. So I know there's a lot of misinformation on the internet about calibration, and hopefully this will be a good guide for all of the right settings you're going to need for this. So we're going to be calibrating this to SDR standards, and you'll see we get really surprisingly good results from this method, despite this being a technically consumer product. So the CalMan software can get a little expensive, the color meters can get a little expensive, but if you bundle all that up in the price of your display, it's still way, way cheaper than a lot of other of the reference monitor options. So just keep that in mind if you're thinking about doing this. And it's a really great option for those people who are professionals, but maybe not grading the next Marvel Avengers movie. So without further ado, let's hop into the next step, which is getting the TV ready for calibration. So the first thing we're going to need to do is get out our service remote and hit the in start button and then enter the password 0413. This will get us to a menu that will let us turn off some of the auto dimming settings, which will give us trouble if we're grading. So we can scroll down to the OLED section and then set TPC enable to off and GSR enable to off. Disabling these settings turns off the auto dimming feature. Doing this will increase the chance of burn-in, but having a display that dims over time will mess up both your calibration and your grading. Because you can imagine how frustrating that would be to have your luminance change over time without you telling it to change. Now all we need to do is exit out of this menu and then we can head on over to the computer. So the first thing that we're going to do is open up CalMan, Home, and then we're going to select OLED and we're going to do an SDR calibration. We can hit Next and here we'll hit Find Meter. And what this meter is, is the device that's going to go on our TV to read the values that our pattern generator outputs. So the CalMan software is going to send a color to the TV. And this little device, this little robot eye is gonna look at that and say, okay, this is a value I'm getting. And that's gonna compare to the value that CalMan sends. And then the software is gonna calculate how to get from where it is to where it should be, and then program that into the LUT. So in this case, Portrait Displays was kind enough to lend me their C6 meter to use for this. But if you already have a color meter that you've been using for your calibration for like your monitors and stuff beforehand, that'll probably work with the software too. So go ahead and give that a try. Also, if you don't feel like buying a color meter, lots of times rental places will have one that you can rent for a while. And that's probably the best option. You can get a really nice one without having to spend a bunch of money, especially because these OLEDs hold their calibration really well. Depending on your situation, you probably won't need to really buy one because you won't be calibrating all the time. And you see our portrait display C6 has shown up and we're gonna go ahead and select OLED white LG. And then next we'll find our source, which will be in LG down here, which in our case is the LG 2020C10. And we'll type in our IP address, which you can find by going to your settings, all settings, connection, network connection settings. In my case, it's ethernet. And here we can see my IP address right there. So I can go ahead and type this in the computer, 2.168.1.210 and hit connect. And we can exit out of our menu on our TV. There we go. Now you can see it's showed up a pin number that we can add in here. So 84802712 and can hit OK. There we go. And now we are connected. So what that did is it let CalMan use the TV as a pattern generator. So if you could, if you want to do, set this up to have DaVinci Resolve your pattern generator. But in my experience, it doesn't really get you any sort of different or better results and just adds more complexity to the thing. So in this case, I'd say just go ahead and go with it with the LG TV. If you've got a TV that doesn't support that, you can run it through Resolve and that'll be good also. But this is mainly about these LG OLEDs that everyone's been using. So I'm trying to keep it a little more focused for you. Because like you'll see at the end of this video, this is going to get you really killer results. Then we're going to have our color space set to Rec. 709 slash sRGB. I'm going to change our gamma formula to power. I'm going to select gamma 2.4 for me since I like to grade in a very dark room. 
But if you're grading in a brighter environment, or maybe you're just editing something like to have some lights on, you should go ahead and try 2.2. But generally, if your environment is set up for color grading and your lighting is controlled, go for the 2.4 option. White point D65, which is all good. Then we can hit next. And here, this is gonna do some pre-calibration measurements just so we can see where our display is currently at. So now in order to get our readings, we are going to place our calibration device on the screen and then hit read series down here. And now CalMan will go through and do some measurements and we'll find where our display is currently at. And then be able to compare this against where our display will be at once we are done calibrating. So here you can see I've got some pretty good readings because I may or may not have already done the calibration on this TV, but your mileage may vary here. Also, you see, we've only got a few points that it's checking here. And if you want to do a really sort of overkill job for your comparison, you can change this from Color Checker Classic to Color Checker SG and Black. And now you see you get a lot more points to read. So this won't affect your final calibration, but it'll let you see better where your display was. So I'm going to just click this back to our Color Checker Classic and close this. And then we can move on to the next part. So here we'll go and find our LG TV. So once again, let's remember our IP address, 192.168.1.210. And of course your IP address will most likely be different than this. This is just the one for my TV. Make sure we have the right series selected. So here we go, 2020 OLED C10 is my display. And then hit connect. Excellent, now you can see we've got our display device here. And now we'll select the profile that we want to put our LUT on. So you see over here, handy thing since we're in SDR, we've got Cinema, Expert 1, Expert 2, Game, and Technicolor. And Tyler, who is my main point of contact at CalMan, recommended to use Game since it's sort of out of the box, has the most things turned off. Like the motion interpolation and other sort of weird things that can get in the way. You can turn those off on the other modes just fine, so you can use any of them if you want to set up multiple calibrations. But this is just sort of the easiest option to get you started. So we'll go ahead and put this on Game. And then we'll hit the full DDC reset, which will basically reset our mode that we're coming from to factory defaults and gets it ready to accept the calibration that we're going to feed it. And of course, since we're doing SDR, we're going to leave HDR unchecked. So we've got this, and then we can hit Next. Make sure that Enable Calibration is checked. And that just sends some information to the TV to let it know to start accepting stuff. All right, and now we can measure our luminance. And now you can see we are pretty bright right now, so we want to bring this down to something that's going to be a little above our final calibration. So I like my monitors to be a little on the bright side. So I wouldn't recommend, or I'd recommend going a little lower than I end up going, but let's drop this down pretty far. So 30 is looking pretty good. Let's maybe drop this down just a little bit. Yeah, there we go. And now that looks good. So hopefully our final calibration will be around that 100, 110 ish point because our calibration is gonna bring our luminance down just a little bit. So that's what we need to overshoot just a bit. All right, so now I can hit next. Now we'll go ahead and hit this little auto cal button down here. And then we'll get this guy popping up. You can see everything looks good here. LG 26 points, SDR 16 and 255. Like exactly what I want. I'll hit OK. And this process will take a little bit of time. But basically, CalMan will take readings and get our grayscale nice and in line. All right, so now our grayscale calibration is complete. And it only took about 10 minutes. And then we can hit OK. And now move on to our 3D LUT. And I'll do the same thing here, hit the auto cal button. Here we're gonna change our calibration type and see we've got some different options here. We've got the lightning LUT, which is just a really quick way to do it, which will get you most of the way there. Then we've got fixed grid nine points, which is a little better than that, but it takes longer. 17, which is better and longer. And then 21, which is really just for bragging rights. So this is let it go overnight. This is let it go sort of shorter time. And then, so nine, sort of a, a reasonable one. So for the tutorial, I'm just going to do the lightning LUT so it doesn't take up a bunch of time and then hit okay. And now you can go and have a sandwich or something because this will take a little bit of time while it goes through and does all of these readings. And especially if this is your first time doing this, I'd recommend going with the lightning LUT just to make sure that everything works out fine. And then if you finish and things look basically right, you can go through later on and do a bigger one if you want to. All right, now you can see nice and fast. Just hit okay. And then next, we're gonna go ahead and hit read series here. And we'll check our luminance. And here you can see that we're a little brighter than we really want to be. The SDR standard calls for somewhere around 100 to 110-ish candela per meter squared. And you see we're a little bit hot here, but I think for here, 
we're just going to call that good enough. And between you and me, I like stuff to be a little on the bright side. So this will help compensate for my natural tendencies to make things over bright. All right, now hit next. And now we'll uncheck enable calibration. And then next again. And now here, this post calibration you'll see is exactly the same as our pre-calibration screen. So we're just going to do that same thing again. We'll be able to compare the two. So now let's go ahead and hit read series. All right, so now you see we're done reading and we can look at our side by side here. So before I actually did a more intense calibration than the lightning LUT. So you can see doing a more intense calibration does pay off, but you know, lightning LUT is just nice and fast and it's still a pretty good calibration. It could be better, but still pretty good. And nice little quick tip here if in this case, since I'm gonna go back and redo my calibration overnight with a much longer one, we don't have to go back and redo everything. We can just go back to Cal Start and Enable Calibration and then go to our color space, which is the part I'm gonna redo. And you see our like grayscale is still in there. So now I'll go back to color space and I'm gonna hit Auto Cal. And I'm gonna change this to a nice big one and let it just go overnight. And then we'll see the results of that compared to the lightning LUT. So I'm going to hit OK. And then sit back and eat dinner, watch a movie, <laughs> go to bed. And we'll see how long this takes. All right. So now you see my longer calibration is done. It took four and a half hours and did 9,261 reads. Just hit OK. And then I'm just going to hop over to a calibration end, uncheck enable calibration. And then we can go ahead and do our post calibration verify. So we'll do read series again. And remember, these are our values from before. So 0 0.9, 2.2, 0.3, and 0.3. All right, now that's done. You can see we've got some really good numbers with this longer read. So then we can just go see our side by side again and see what this is comparing. This is the calibration I had before, before the whole tutorial, so 0.7, 1.2, and now we're at 0.4 and 1. That is pretty good. And these numbers just represent the deviation of the measured value from the expected value, and it's generally considered that any number here below 2 is acceptable for professional work, and you see we are well below that. All right, so I hope that cleared some stuff up for you. If you have any questions, be sure to leave that down in the comments. I'm going to be monitoring these, and I'm going to try and get some people from CalMan to also be on there responding to stuff because they are much more knowledgeable than I am about this stuff because there is a lot of technical things that go into calibration because you want your display to be spot on because it's very embarrassing to be using a display that is not spot on. So if you like this video, I'm sure you know what to do. Otherwise, I've been Theo with Mr. Media. We have a great day, and I will see you next time. Bye.